It is such a great opportunity and feel very blessed to be with you here on Easter Sunday. And I feel very blessed to have my friend who I am going to see tomorrow, Daniel <laughs> Ottawi from the Island Spirit up there at Ventura. Happy Easter, Daniel. Happy Easter, Phil, and everybody watching. Good morning, guys. Good to see you. Dude, I got to tell you, I shot the morning briefing this morning down on the beach and had rain and kind of juggled that. Yesterday, I got completely wiped out with a big gust of wind, broke my microphones and everything else. But, dude, I'm sitting there on the beach. I start the morning briefing. And then at one point, I glance behind me. And, Daniel, there is this gorgeous freaking rainbow. And it was the, the most beautiful rain. I mean, I couldn't have written a better script for Easter Sunday. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> It was beautiful. Hey, Albert Roy says, happy Easter. God bless all of you. Albert, thanks for joining us. Dan Smith, happy Easter. And all the fine folks of the Freeman Adventures family, have a blessed day and tight lines to all of you for this week. Gosh darn it. Dan, that means a lot to us. Isaac says, happy Easter. Hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Isaac, me too. I'm halfway tempted to come and see you. Um, and six win says, uh, he has risen. Hallelujah. Cue ball. Happy Easter, everybody. And oh my God, we got a lot of people on here, man. I thought we weren't going to have anybody because it's Easter. Brandon <laughs> says, happy Easter. Cue ball says, have a blessed day. Wow. I mean, I don't think it's me. I think it's you, Daniel. You're, you're becoming quite popular. <laughs> I don't know about that. They love your show, Phil. <laughs> I know. We got, well, let's put it this way. We make a great team, and I, and I love doing this. I like so that. people yeah. poke their head out there right now, and they go, oh, man, rain. You know, it looks like lousy weather. It looks like great weather for the opener. I mean, I'd have little breeze, but it looks good. How about you? No, I was looking at the weather this morning. It looks beautiful. It looks really nice tomorrow. I'm uh, pretty excited about it. Really, the whole week looks nice. I don't. I don't see a whole lot of you know bad weather which is always encouraging yeah and you know we're talking about the rockfish opener tomorrow i'll be on board the island spirit we're going to shoot mm -hmm. a video of the day and then we're going to do a tour of the boat uh we intend on doing a lot but we're just focused on the opener but the very next day you can fish rockfish and the rest of the week if you're talking about great weather this would be a great time to go up there to ventura sport fishing and I've got to say, Daniel, this is the last day to save 20% out of Ventura Sport Fishing. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, that's the reason we really wanted to do the show this morning, guys. Today's the very last day that you could use our discount code at Ventura Sport Fishing. So uh, call the landing. There should be someone at the office for the majority of the day today. Um, there should be someone as late as maybe like 930, 10 o'clock there tonight. So uh, call and mention the code preseason20, or you can use that code online. It's uh, the very, very last day that you can save 20% on any fishing trip that you want to go on this year for the Island Spirit or the Californian also. So uh, take out your calendar. Uh, if there's a day you want to go fishing and you have it marked down, maybe in May, June, July, August, anytime. Um, today's the last day to save 20%. So I'd take advantage and try to make some reservations uh while you can at a discounted price um we uh we also you know we have that trip tomorrow but we're also open party all week long we do have uh some people signed up for every day this week so uh just need a few more to get out on all those days so i uh hoping to see the reservations coming in for the island spirit this week so we can get a lot of fishing in and have a good time on the water while this weather's nice yeah, you got to strike when the iron is hot because April can be a windy month. So if you see a forecast and the weather looks good, yeah, take advantage of it, right? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. You guys, you know, know how to check the weather just as well as we do. Um, but yeah, it looks good. We have good weather coming up. Uh, fishing's been good. We're excited to be able to keep rockfish now. Uh, continue to you know keep our eyes peeled and try for game fish every day. Um, you know, we, we just want to go out and have a good time and uh, bring you guys with us. So check out the website, call the landing, and use the code PRESEASON20. Save 20%. Today's the last day. And that is VenturaSwordFishing.com, 805-676-3474. Correct. All right. Hey, what a memory, huh? I can't believe it. I know. Hey, uh, I'm going to read a couple of comments, then we're going to get into the new regs, and we're going to talk tackle. 
Um, let's see here. Cue ball says, have a blessed day, everybody. Indeed, he has risen. Our Savior, the greatest fisherman of all time, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, Sean Thompson <laughs> says, happy Easter. Um, the pastor just said, please put your cell phone on silent. Well, unless you're watching Daniel and I, I, I think the pastor would make an excuse. Just tell him Jesus was the greatest fisherman <laughs> of all time. When you're listening yeah. to the listening report, uh, that might be blasphemous. So uh, stay tuned uh, for more here. All right. Brandon says, does the cold storm affect the water temperature at all, Captain Daniel, or is it minimal? Um, I don't think it has too big of an effect on the water temperature just because it's already so low this time of year. You know, it's already uh, it has been below 60 degrees since uh, since we've been fishing already. So I don't imagine it's changed too much. Uh, I expect it to still be in that like, you know, high, high 50s number that we've had for the last few weeks. Yeah, me too. And, you know, all my commercial days of fishing rock cod and God only knows how I survived those days. I was so ill-equipped to be running a boat. My brother and I were talking the other day. We have no idea how we're still alive. But all those many days out on Tanner and Cortez, mostly where we were, I never wow. saw a situation where the water temperature dropped and the rockfish shut off. I never saw that. That really isn't something that is in play, right? No, if anything, rockfish love the cold water, you know? If anything, rockfish is at its best when the water is a little more chilly than when it's uh, warm. So um, cold water has no ill effect on rock fishing, for sure. All right, cue ball says he's looking at you right now, Daniel, and he has the feeling this will be the last time he sees you well-rested because he thinks you're going to be <laughs> rocking for the rest of the year. He may be right. I really hope so. Yeah, I've uh, been getting a lot of sleep lately, feeling nice. Um, but trust me, I'd rather be waking up super early and running the island spirit. So I'm hoping we get to do a lot more of that than having days to sleep in. All right, so very good. Make your reservations and take away my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work on that tomorrow a little bit with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, N6 Wind says, uh, what depth of water is within your range? What are you going to be fishing? How deep? So I imagine we'll start somewhere in like the – 50 fathom ish range so like 300 feet but um depending on how it goes we could we could fish way deeper if we wanted to if uh, we find that the quality is maybe getting better in the deeper water we might fish deeper or we might uh fish shallower if we're trying to you know include some white fish and sheephead and a little more variety in the bag excellent cue ball just said hey i will definitely be up to fish with you you're in my backyard all right awesome you will Please. not can't wait you won't regret it, cue ball. You're going to run into a crew that is beyond your wildest expectations. These guys are awesome, and I'll be able to document that tomorrow for sure. Hey, uh, so people are asking uh, about what depth and everything. What kind of tackle should we be bringing? So I'd bring, um, for the rock cod fishing, I'd for sure bring like a Maybe like a medium rated rod. Uh, the most important thing is to have a good sized reel with plenty of spectra. I highly recommend having spectra for the um, deeper water rock fishing. It just helps you feel the bites more, helps you, uh, you know, negate some of that stretching of the line that you get with a lot of mono. Um, yeah, really important to have a full reel of spectra, a short top shot of like, a, you know, mono or fluorocarbon or whatever you want to use. And uh, heavy weights you need to have heavy weights like 12s and 16s. Uh, I'd for sure have you need to have um, a variety of hooks for tomorrow. For uh, for deep water cod, I prefer circle hooks, like size 2.0 or 3.0 circle hooks work really well. Um, you know, just because the 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 line is so far down there, a lot of the times when you're you know lifting up and setting the hook, you're not really doing anything. So it's uh, it's nice to have the help from that circle hook to kind of help the fish hook itself when you get a bite there. Um, yeah, I'd bring some, uh, for the deep water cod, just have your heavy sinkers, circle hooks, uh, probably like 30 pound test on the mono 30 or 40 pound test should be fine. And, um, yeah, we have all the bait you need. We're going to grab live bait and, you know, we also have a uh, fresh frozen squid to chop up some strips and we have all the bait you need. 
I know you love bait fishing because it results in so many more fish, but jig fishing, is that something that you're okay with? And the slow pitch method, a lot of people are totally into that. What do you say to that? Yeah. No, I know a lot of people are really into it. I'm just, I'm not too familiar with the slow pitch thing, but feel, feel free to try, you know, if it's working, you know, kudos to you, keep it up. Um, we just ask that if you're not, you know, doing so well in the jig, just, just fish a bait, you know, put some fish in your bags and then, uh, and then go, you know, mess around with the jig. But, um, yeah, you guys can do what you want to do. If you want to fish a jig, that's fine. Just, uh, make sure you're keeping it legal. A lot of times people try to use a jig as their sinker and still put two hooks on top. We, we can't do that. You can have one teaser hook, but. Not two. Got to, you know, stay within the regulations and make sure we're only using two hooks. So uh, as long as, you know, we're all legal and good, have fun and do what you would like to. All right, everybody. More people coming on here this beautiful Easter Sunday morning. You are watching a live presentation of Freedman Adventures with Captain Daniel Hotaway from the Island Spirit out of Ventura Sword Fishing. Um, Cuba wants to know... Uh, the depth limitations he wants to know can we fish jurassic park now and for people who don't know jurassic park of course dinosaurs from the movie and he's talking about really big <laughs> cod in deep water uh what are the limitations in terms of depth i don't think there's a depth limitation now i think you can uh Whoa. you can fish deeper than um 600 feet if you'd like all right uh yeah, N6. If you'd like. go ahead i'm sorry no, no, I was just saying that uh, you can fish as deep as you'd like. They took away a couple reds from us, but they're letting us fish as uh, as deep as we'd like to. So uh, I feel like that kind of, you know, works against each other because a lot of the times you're going into the deeper water to get those bigger reds. But, I mean, we'll see what else there is to catch. You know, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of variety within that rockfish family. So we, uh, we'll have to catch some other stuff to fill out the bags. N6, Quinn wants to know, are electric reels welcome on your boat? Of course, yeah. Electric reels are great. All right, um, and Q-Ball says he likes dropping his bluefin jig on the co-eds. On the, he uses the, like, the big knife jig and that kind of thing for the rock fishing. I know that's been effective. I've yeah. seen guys doing that. I've seen people um, kill them on that too, yeah. Yeah, like I said, feel free to. I would just still maybe put a dropper loop above it and uh, fish a squid strip just so you can have a chance of catching two. Or, you know, it's a long way up. You might as well send uh, two baits down there. All right, very good. Uh, Joshua is coming to us from Cape Town, South, South Africa, watching the show. And we send you our very, very best. That is freaking awesome thank you so much for yeah. joining us how do you like that we've got an international audience today daniel i know that's pretty cool that's a that's a ways away welcome I to know. our stream i taught with a lot of teachers from uh, south africa when i was in china so if you ever get out this way make mm -hmm. sure you check out ventura sport fishing that would be great tim marquez says wow south africa um let's see brandon not going to reel in 350 feet all day long, Phil. I need my electric reel. Oh, come on, Brandon. It's not, <laughs> I don't know, man. I just feel like, I don't know. I, I don't want to start ragging on electric reels. I get some guys like them, but I like the whole thing, yeah. like reeling my catch in. I do, too. I, I personally will probably never buy an electric reel. I don't, I don't mind just turning the handle, but if that's your thing and, and you know how to use it and it works for you, you know, more power to you. A hundred percent. Yeah. I'm not trying to diminish anybody else, but I like that whole, you know, feeling, oh man, you feel a head shake or I don't know. I just like that. Tim Marquez says on the knife jig, do we use the same uh, tuna hooks, the, the big hooks that are on there? That should be fine. Right, Daniel? Yeah, it should be fine. I don't know uh, if you'd like to, if it makes you feel better to put some smaller hooks on there, if you have them, um, uh... If you have like smaller assist hooks or something you want to use that's that's fine that's cool but uh you don't need to you can just use the stock hooks that come on the jig and they should work just fine all right and cue ball concurs and tim says thank you for the advice so let's talk a little bit about the new regs what do you want to point out about the new regs daniel 
<clears throat> well, I think the just the biggest thing everybody uh, is talking about and noticing is the uh, the red limit. So uh, it's a little bit unfortunate that we could only have two now. Um, but that kind of that kind of just opened the doors for us trying to you know catch some other stuff, find find other rockfish that want to bite. Maybe the the rockfish that are kind of suspended a little bit higher off the bottom, like the chilies and grouper and you know bankies, all all that good stuff. It's really good meat, and it's a little bit higher off the bottom. So if, if we uh, stop on a rock where we see a lot of suspended fish, we'll let you guys know to maybe you know stop short of the bottom, or once you get to the bottom, maybe take like twenty or thirty cranks up and. We can avoid catching those reds if we have too many and try to, you know, catch some of that other good stuff that we can keep. Widows, you know, there's a lot of really nice tasting rockfish that kind of live a little bit further off the bottom than the reds and chuckleheads and all those kind of fish do. Yeah, you know, um, while you say it's unfortunate and I agree, it just seems to me, and I've been watching this for I hate to tell you how many years, 60 years or something like that, <laughs> at least 55. And uh, it always opens another door and everything works out and you end up going home with a big full sack of fillets and having a really great time on the water. So um, I, I, and what I'm saying is I choose to focus on the positive, being out on the island spirit, saving 20 percent, having a boat burger oh, yeah. and still going home with a big sack of fillets. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can't let, you know something so like you know minuscule drag you down and say oh, i don't i don't want to go fishing anymore it's not that big of a deal it'll be all right we'll still find you know plenty of really tasty fish to catch for you and let you take home and it's all going to be okay we just want to take you out and have a nice day on the water well speaking of tasty fish steve uh Ivanovich wants to know when the rockfish opener is it is tomorrow steve april 1st he yep. wants to know, Daniel, what is your favorite type of fish for fish tacos? Man, he's, what a home run. He just threw us a softball. Um, can't go wrong with halibut. I'm a halibut guy. I like halibut a lot. It's good meat. And, of course, man, rockfish. I mean, there's a whole bunch of fish that work for fish tacos. But rock oh, yeah. Fish, white I fish another. is really good. Yeah. You ever had whitefish tacos? I like those a lot. Whitefish are really tasty. Um, yeah, cod, whitefish, lingcod, sea bass. I mean, with all this stuff you catch up here, you really can't go wrong. It's a lot of really good white meat. Yeah, for sure. Lots of people watching, lots of people participating. That is really, really good stuff. Um, yeah. So uh, we've got that. And then anything else in terms of regs that people need to be aware of? You already mentioned, but maybe, you know, two hooks and blah, 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 right? Yeah, it's just um, super important that everybody understands you can only fish with two hooks. Uh, I know you see pictures online of, you know, like a 10 hook ganyan or whatever. That's uh, That was way back in the day. That was a long time ago. Nowadays, the only reason you can fish with more than two hooks is if you're sand dab fishing with uh with no other rock fish or white fish or anything else on the boat then you can have a rig where you're you know using many many hooks trying to catch sand dab because there's no limit on them but uh for the kind of fishing that we'll be doing you you cannot use more than two hooks so we just recommend a simple double dropper loop setup we're more than happy to you know tie it up for you so you don't have to do any work just Find one of the crew members, hand them a 16 ounce sinker and two hooks, and they'll uh, they'll get you squared away with a proper rig for tomorrow. I'm gonna sound like a real jerk here, but there is nothing like feeling the rattle of a 50 or 75 hook ganyan. Let me tell you, man, <laughs> those were the days. Oh my God, that was a long time. I'm probably the guy that uh, uh, did the. Uh, well, I'm not gonna get into that, but man, that was something else. All right, um, let's see. We've got uh, Steve wants to know. And, I, and I'm glad Steve asked this question, actually, because we're focused on the rockfish, Daniel. But you're going to look around for mm -hmm. sea bass and halibut and other species. So he wants yeah. to know your go-to for halibut, number one. And if he wanted to catch a lingcod, is there something different he could do to accomplish that? Um, for the lingcod, if you really, really want to try to catch a lingcod tomorrow, what I would recommend doing is maybe fishing a sardine or an anchovy on one of your hooks. You could try using the live bait. Uh, that works really, really well for lingcod. 
Um, and as far as the setup goes, you're going to be using the same rig, just a double dropper loop in the deep water. Um, you're not going to need to change anything up for that. Uh, with the link cod, it's a kind of like a luck of the draw thing most of the time, you know. Sometimes you'll just be fishing your two squid strips and you'll you'll have, you know, two medium-sized rockfish on and a link cod will just grab onto one of them and, you know, stay on there the whole way up. So uh, a lot of it is luck. But uh, if you really want to focus on the link cod, use your use a live bait. Try to use an anchovy or a sardine. And then right, uh, the second part of this question was yeah. halibut setup. So we're going to start off rock fishing, but when it's time to do halibut and sea bass, we're going to um, the crew is going to do a seminar to kind of teach everybody what we're going to be doing what the bite feels like, what to do when you get bit, all that good stuff. And they're going to help you guys rig up. Um, it's a very similar setup. It's just a smaller weight and only one hook. So it's probably going to be like a six ounce torpedo sinker on the bottom. And then about three or four feet up, you're going to have a, like an eight to 12 inch dropper loop with a small like one OJ hook to put a sardine on. That'll be your halibut rig. All right, excellent, man. I cannot wait until tomorrow. Hey, everybody, you're listening to Daniel Hottaway here on the Freedman Adventures live presentation. Tomorrow's opening day. You can still save 20% by going to Ventura Sport yeah. Fishing or calling 805-676-3474. Pre-season 20 is the magical word. You have to give that to Sal when you call up there or just Put that at checkout, and you'll save 20%, but only one more day. Today, that's it. You're done. So that goes for the whole calendar year, everybody. You can look at your calendar, figure out what trips you want to go on, and book here today to save 20%. You'd be crazy not to do it. <laughs> hey, Brandon wants to know, do you ever see the cow cod uh, opening up anytime in the foreseeable future? Do you think that's a possibility? Um, I, I hope so. That would be pretty sweet, but, um, I, I don't expect it. I'm not, it would be a surprise, but, um, I don't know. It seems like when they take stuff away, they don't, they don't normally give it back, but, um, hopefully one day we'll get the cow cod back. That would be really cool. Steve wants to know, can you use a sand dab for bait for ling cod number one? And is that effective? Yeah. Uh, you certainly could, if you like. You do have to use a bit of a bigger hook if you want to do that, maybe like a five or six hot hook. And if you just put the hook like through the top of the jaw, going out the bottom of the jaw, like keeping its mouth closed, and I find that's a pretty good way to hook them. If you just uh, get a really big hook and kind of seal its mouth shut with the hook, that that works well for link cod sometimes. All right, very good. And Steve says thank you so much for answering his questions. Cue ball, it's. Let's not forget the last few years, guys. Don't get on a boat without at least one tuna <laughs> rig. Uh, don't get caught with your pants down. Never um, know when these brutes are going to show up. Sorry about that. I'm, my eyes are not what they used to be. Um, I mean, he's like uh, pointing out that uh, those bluefin are everywhere. They're catching them up there, the freaking Golden Gate Bridge in the background now. And, they're everywhere. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know that people need to come out with their two speeds and everything right now, but it's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's the ocean. You never know what to expect. I would say it'd be pretty shocking if it happened this early in the season with the, the water being as cold as it is right now. But, uh, you know, the last couple of falls we've seen tuna up in our backyard. So I'd say, uh, that's more applicable towards maybe the end of the year, like, you know, you know, August, September, October, that kind of, that kind of time of year, I'd say for sure. Like you never know, we could, we could see them, but this time of year, I'd be pretty shocked if I was coming fishing right now, I wouldn't be uh, too worried about missing out on tuna in the channel islands. And I'll, and I'll friggin' guarantee you that if you see them, we're going to be doing a live update right here about those blue oh, yeah. tuna. <laughs> yep. Hey, N6 Win makes a good point, and I certainly didn't mean to diminish people, but he's saying, you know what? Electric reels are a blessing. They offer us hardworking fishermen 
who've developed some medical and physical problems to continue at the sport. That is a point well made. You are absolutely yeah. right. It's very true. Yep. Uh, let's see. K K Waka or whatever it is. Sorry about that. Like I say, my eyes aren't what they used to be. I better get glasses. If you really think about it, uh, minty is just cold spicy. You get that? Did I read that right? Are you looking at it? Yeah, no. you read it right. It doesn't have a, a whole lot to do with anything we're talking about, but it's a, it's a good point. <laughs> yes. There you are. Excellent. All right. Um, so weather looks good. The opener looks good. Are, are you close to like uh, being able to get out on Tuesday or Wednesday? You just need a few more folks to make that happen, right? Um, yeah. So I think... Well, I can't remember if it's Tuesday or Wednesday, but one of those days, I think I already have about uh, seven people or so signed up, so I'm super close to getting out. I think I need about like 10 to officially make it a go. Um, but yeah, we have some people signed up for every day this week, so if there's you know really any day you're interested in coming out, just make a reservation. You know, As soon as you make a reservation, people can go online and see that there's you know interest in that trip, and it kind of encourages other people to book it as well so if you're uh if you're interested in coming out um don't hesitate don't wait for someone else to sign up don't be afraid to just be the first guy to call and say yeah you know i want to go fishing that day sign me up and i'm sure uh, others will follow all right hit that like button everybody we deeply appreciate it happy easter to all of you daniel and i are stoked to have so many of you tune it in here this morning it is fantastic oh, yeah. you have to are, are, are you okay on time? Do you have to run off to church or something? Oh, no, no. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> all right. Well, we've got I'm, more uh, questions. I'm all yours, Phil. <laughs> well, let's answer them. Sounds good, Daniel. Can't wait to see you in the morning. Um, you ever see any yeah. yellows? Brandon asked. You ever see any yellows at the islands <laughs> cruising around this time of year? Um, I can't say I have this early in the year. Maybe, uh, maybe like in May, June for sure, but... Can't remember the last time I saw them in April. All right, but it does happen. I mean, they'll get on the squid just like yeah. anything else. Is is there any squid around town too. right now? Uh, I can't say for sure if there is or isn't, but uh, uh, we're going to find out. We're going to take a look, and uh, I'm sure with the rockfish season opening up, there'll be a lot of other boats out this week and looking, and uh, I'm sure some squid will be found, yeah. All right, good stuff. Appreciate all the likes, everybody. Keep hitting that like button. Morning briefing will premiere right after Daniel's report this morning. I had a little rain delay, and I apologize for being a little bit late. Steve, good question. Steve, so his uncle uh, loves to fish, and he wants to know, do landings, any landings, I don't know, uh, have electric reels for rent? He can't fish his uncle due to his health. I don't know about that. I haven't heard of any, but what do you think? No, I haven't heard of any either, but that is a really good idea for uh, for for some landings to do, especially the you know super rock fishing heavy landings. That that's not a bad idea. Yeah, something we could look into for sure. Yeah, there you go. You know what, Daniel? Every time somebody has a suggestion, you never say, "Ah, that's a dumb idea." You say, "Hey, let's look into it. Let's yeah. think about that." Whether it's trying a new fishing technique or the electric real idea. I love you for that, man. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, don't want to discourage anybody from fishing if uh, if an electric reel is what you know is is the you know X factor in whether you can go fishing or you can't. You know, we're all we're all for it. Halibut man, Mitchell. Happy Easter, my friend. I saw him down here surf fishing the other morning. He is a great Freeman Adventures family member. He says if any listener hasn't been fishing the Channel Islands, it is surreal. Once you see the arc at Anacapa, it all sets in. He is just talking about the, the beauty of fishing the Channel Islands. Then you add all the great fishing up there. He's absolutely right. It's a beautiful place to fish, Daniel. A hundred percent. And, uh, we had a really cool scene on our last trip. We were, we were fishing close to the arch. So we had a view of that and then just past it. There was a, there was a couple whales that were putting on like an absolute show for us, you know, wow. It's completely. 
really cool. I think some people got some really cool pictures and videos of that on oh, our last well. trip. So yeah, the, that's a really, really beautiful scenery to be had as God, well as the good fishing out there. That yeah. is fantastic. I love it. Gerard Perlis says, happy Easter, Phil and Freeman Adventures family. Any chance of hooking a lingcod and what lure to use? If you don't mind repeating that one more time, go ahead, because I think Gerard just joined us a little late. Hey, happy Easter to you, too, my friend. Yeah, happy Easter. Uh, there's always a chance of hooking up on a link cod when we're uh, fishing for rockfish. Um, my personal favorite way to catch a link cod would just to be using live bait. So we are going to have live bait tomorrow. So if, uh, if you would just like to maybe put a sardine or an anchovy on one of your hooks and a strip of squid on the other one, you have a really, really good shot at catching a link cod. All right, Q-Ball says you might find a six-pack that has electric reels. Isaac wants to know how many people you need to run. Um, I I want to say a dozen. I want to say 12 people is what's needed for us to run. But if we're, uh, you know, halfway through the day and we have 10 people signed up for the next day, we might just make it a go officially to encourage some more people to sign up. But uh, we would like to see, like, uh, probably a minimum of, like, 10 to a dozen people to be able to run. All right. Good stuff. Man, the comments just keep coming. Tons of people watching the oh, show. Yeah. I would love to see you tomorrow morning on board the Island Spirit, everybody. I will be there with Daniel eating a boat <laughs> burger without the bread because I'm a carnivore guy. But I still get to enjoy yeah, yeah. all the cuisine. And <laughs> I will be taking your photo and video while you are catching fish. So that should be a lot of fun. Steve says, thanks for, yeah. uh, uh, thanks for answering all my questions. Kai fish killer. Hey, happy Easter to you, my friend. What do you think about surface action later this year? Calicos, yellows, barracuda, halibut, white sea bass. You think that's going to play out as we go along? Yeah, hundred percent. Um, like we were talking about in one of our previous shows, uh, it is shaping up to be a pretty good year. You know, we're seeing, uh, a lot of bait, water's looking clean, you know, as the, as the summer starts to, or the spring continues to move along and summer creeps up, I expect the water to get quite a bit warmer and for us to have some really good uh, surface action and a productive year on, you know, yellowtail, barracuda, halibut, sea bass, calico bass, all that good stuff. So I'm really excited for it. And, uh, you know, we're, we're trying every single day. And as, as the water gets warmer and warmer, we'll be spending more and more time uh, focusing on you know, fishing for the exotics. Yeah, I mean, I was on your boat last year, the Island Spirit, and uh, mm -hmm. my brother Paul flew in from Taiwan, and we were throwing big old gar over the rail and having just yeah. hooped it up, man, just like the old days, man. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, we expect to have a lot more of that this year, so we can't wait. Scott Grant says, happy Easter all in six wins, says he's talking to another guy. Uh Last year, the boats out of Emeryville were talking about electric reels to rep. Um, Scott Grant, Phil and Daniel, see you tomorrow. Hey, Scott, that'll be great. Awesome. Can't wait. Scott, yeah, right on. Scott, come say hi. Yeah, absolutely, we'll Scott. Tomorrow. Can't wait to see you tomorrow, my friend. Anthony, good morning, Anthony. Top of the morning and happy Easter. Same to you, my friend. Um, Stanovich, love the live video. Thanks, guys. Have a good morning, rest of your day. Eat breakfast if you haven't eaten breakfast yet. Have you had breakfast yet, Daniel? Uh, I had a coffee, so that counts, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Okay. But I've only had like eight cups, so I still have another ten to go, go there today. <laughs> yes. uh, Brandon says, Don't forget to take pictures, Phil, with all this rain. The vegetation on the island has to look gorgeous. Something from Jurassic Park movies. Thanks, Phil. Hey, Brandon, that's my job tomorrow, man. Photographs, video. I'll have that all for you. I promise you, my friend. Uh, Richard, Daniel, Davin, and Bert are awesome. Talking about your crew there. Hey, thank you very much, Richard. Yeah, that's my crew. Uh, Davin is our main deckhand. Bert is my galley cook. Uh, they will both be there tomorrow as long as, and uh, sorry. Um, also, my other deckhand, Ron, is going to be there also. So it's going to be me, Davin, Ron, and Bert. We can't wait to see you guys 
you know, fishing this week or whenever you guys come out. All right. I, you got to love Isaac, man. He's got a great idea. If you can't, you know, if you don't have an electric reel, there's not one for rent. You can't afford it. He's got two kids. They're like, you know, 10 years old or something. He said he'll send them down there and they can reel the people in for them. Not a bad idea, man. It might be breaking child yeah. labor laws, but it's a pretty good idea. Yeah, not a bad idea. You know what? If if uh, I heard that when I was back being ten years old, I would I would say, "Hey, I volunteer, man. I'm in. I'd be all over that." <laughs> yeah. All right. I don't know why somebody's asking this. What's your favorite movie, Daniel? Oh, that's tough. Um, I'd have to say uh, Borat. Borat. Okay. And uh, yeah, I don't know what one. mine. Uh, honestly. <laughs> I like uh, action, like uh, maybe like Shawshank Redemption, but I like more, uh, I don't know. I like action stuff, man. I don't want to be put to sleep. I like when the good guys like kill the bad guys and there's a lot of action surrounding it. That's my basic thing. So there you go. Uh, Cue ball. Nice. Uh, Always bring my buddy's kids. Uh, Great when the wrong fish shows up. Hey, Junior, take this (laughs) rod. Yeah, I passed a lot of fish to my, a lot of handoffs to my kids, that is for sure. Hey, uh, Daniel, I got a feeling we can probably keep going, but we want to let everybody celebrate. Um, all yeah. Time. We want to let them celebrate this beautiful day. It's Easter. It's a really That's special really day. Um, why don't you, one more time, let us know what's up. Saving the 20%, the opener, and you're open the rest of the week. Yeah, just to kind of let you guys know again, today is the very, very last day that we have the preseason 20% off deal going. Uh, There should be someone in the office pretty much all day today. Uh, The Endeavor is departing on an overnight trip tonight, so there should be someone in the office as late as maybe like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. So call the landing, uh, visit us online, Uh, website's VenturaSportFishing.com, the landing phone is 805-676-3474. 805-676-3474. And uh, you can get 20% off on any trip you book throughout the entire year for the Island Spirit or the Californian if you just mention the code PRESEASON20. If you're punching it in online, it's PRESEASON20, all capital letters. Um, so take advantage of that. That deal will be gone when the clock strikes midnight tonight. Um, you know, 20% is, is quite a bit when you... Um, you know, off of a hundred ten or hundred forty dollar trip, it's a good chunk of change. So take advantage of that. Like Phil said, open up your calendars, figure out when you want to go fishing, and uh, make those reservations today while you still have time to get the discount. Um, it uh, it 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 will work for our trip tomorrow. We still do have around twenty something spots for tomorrow, so uh, you could use it for tomorrow. I have plenty of spots open this week. I'd like to get out as much as I can this week. So any other day you see that you're free, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, we have uh, plenty of open spots. Uh, Cody on the Californian has plenty of open spots. If you want to go check out the Californian, the old Matt Walsh and fish with Cody, you can use that preseason code to get on his boat as well. But uh, take advantage of that. Call the landing. Check us out online. And I hope to see you guys super soon. Daniel and everybody out there listening, happy Easter, my friend. I can't wait to see you in the morning, and I send you all my very, very best blessings to you and all your loved ones, Daniel. Thank you so much. Same to you, Phil. Happy uh, happy Easter. Happy Easter to all you guys watching, and I hope we see you fishing soon and see you tomorrow, Phil. All right. Looking forward to it and premiering <laughs> right here on the Freedman Adventures YouTube channel is the morning briefing at 945. Boy, you sure timed this show right, let me tell you, Daniel. Right. <laughs> awesome. Have a great have a great one and right. once again happy Easter. I'll see you in the morning. Yes, sir. See you in the morning. Happy Easter, everybody.